Hello, and welcome to Rust Electricity for Beginners. My name is Ozzy, and in this episode we're going to create an auto-feed system for our furnaces and add a battery backup to our electrical circuit. Now everything we're going to mention today is available in the Tier 1 workbench. For the battery backup we're going to use a battery, the XOR switch, a blocker, and a couple of electrical branches. And for the furnaces we're going to use the storage adapters, the conveyor, igniter, and the button, as well as another electrical branch. Now for those of you who have followed the series so far may notice that my little 2-1 starter has expanded a little bit and this is kind of what tends to happen once I go out and get my first farm. All the stone sort of <laughs> blends back into the, uh, the base. But I rearranged a little bit of the circuitry, added my door opener to the top here and my solar panels to the roof. So all the circuitry is the same, I've kind of just rearranged it a bit. And I've decided, you know, well, all this other farm that I've got here, this metal and sulfur, I would, uh, well, I'd like to smelt it, but just one little furnace is not going to cut it. So totally not in any way being on a build server, I absolutely definitely crafted these myself. Uh, so we're going to use these furnaces. And then in any industrial circuit, the conveyor is the heart and soul. And then we add these storage adapters to anything we want to connect together. So we're going to add them to all of our furnaces plus this box with the farm. And then we're going to take all of the outputs, put them into the inputs, connect all of these in series. And pipes are a little bit wonky for connecting things. You can't put them through walls and sometimes it doesn't like how far or how low it is and things like that. So you might have to play with it a bit. So normally this is not how I recommend doing a setup for the furnaces, but if it's our initial one and we're just going in and out of one box, this is fine. So next we need to add another branch to our circuit so that we can pull one power for that conveyor. And then because we have this other branch that we used last time, we can just connect directly to it. We're going to wire this up. And I'm actually going to drop it down to the floor because I think that looks better, personally. Now there are a lot of cool things you can do with conveyors. It has the option for filters, which means I can tell it, uh, grab this stuff, don't grab that stuff, set minimums and maximums and all sorts of things. For this little circuit, I'm not really worried about that. I'm not really concerned with efficiency. I just want this stuff crafted without me having to spend a whole lot of time or effort on it. So here we can turn on our conveyor and then it's going to pull stuff from our farm box. It's going to pull both wood and ore and it's going to distribute it evenly amongst our furnaces. Actually what it's technically doing is it's distributing evenly between these three furnaces and this box. So what's happening is it's creating an infinite loop and everything that it doesn't grab and put in the furnaces will go back in this box and then it'll grab it again and again and again until it finally gets used up. Now that's fine for this system, but when you start adding a lot of other things, it becomes a lot more complicated. That's a worry for another time. For right now, we could start all of these manually, but I think it's more fun to use an igniter. Now if you haven't used an igniter before, this essentially takes a little bit of power and it will start anything that has the power to use flames. A campfire, a furnace, anything else like that. And since the button is free power, this satisfying starting all three furnaces at once is actually pretty cheap. So that's pretty cool. Uh, you can add kind of like a little sprinkler system to turn it off with a press of a button too, but I'm not going to worry about that for this one. Now one more thing we can do is if we say decide we want our smelted goods to go not into this box but into this box over here, what we can do is add an adapter to this box, put a conveyor on the back side of the furnaces, run the, conver the furnaces to the conveyor, and then, like I said, with it being finicky, um, <laughs> we can't go through walls or anything, so... <laughs> this tacky little, uh, ring around the pillar is all I can really manage. <sighs> oh, yeah. 
Anyway, we need some power for this conveyor, and there is a pass-through on conveyors, so instead of adding another branch, I can just pass through this one and go to the other. All I have to do is adjust this branch in here to show two power instead of one. And then we can come back, turn this one on, and instead of sending all of our smelted goods to this box, which when it's full it wasn't actually able to do, it's going to send them to this box instead. Now the reason this works is because conveyors can't see past other conveyors. So this conveyor can see this box and these three furnaces. This conveyor can see these three furnaces and this box. So this one's not trying to pull resources from here and it can actually only pull from the output. It's never going to pull from the fuel or the input. So we don't have to worry about that. So we can actually set both of these up without any filters and it'll work for the most part what we want. Now to add a battery back up to our system, say for example if, you know, for the most part I don't really use a whole lot of power, I'm at max capacity and I found another battery while out smashing barrels or, you know, maybe just for a little bit of extra peace of mind. I'm going to add the second battery here and because I still only have one solar panel that means I have to split the power coming from that solar panel so that I can charge both batteries. Now one power from that solar panel is being used in my daylight sensor, so I'm going to take the power out, add it to the power in on this branch, and normally I do the lower amount for a branch off, but it really depends on the circuit. So for this I actually want to set this one to 17. And since the branch out is the priority for an electrical branch, what that means is I want 17 power from the solar panel to go to my main battery before any excess goes to my secondary, my backup. So if the solar panel has 19 power, it'll lose one to the, the daylight sensor and then it'll use the other 17 for my primary battery. If it's getting 19 or 20 power, power sent, say at the height of the day, it'll send that to my battery backup. It's going to be a lot slower of a charge, but realistically I should never actually need this battery anyways. So the way the backup circuit itself works is primarily due to this XOR switch. Now the way the XOR switch works is if there is power to both inputs, it will block the output. If there is power to only one input, it will allow that power to pass through. So this is really great for if a battery gets destroyed or depleted because you'll only ever have the one extra power going through. The only thing we need is while there is power in both batteries, we need a way to block the second one. So we're going to add this blocker and an electrical branch. We're going to put our backup battery through the blocker into the XOR switch. And you'll notice a green light that corresponds to the node we sent it in saying that there's power. Because there's only one input with power, we get another green light for the out. And then we're going to put the primary power into this electrical branch and the power out into the XOR switch. Now we have two green lights for the input because they're both receiving power and a red light for the output because since both of these are receiving power there is no output. It blocks it off. So what we need to do is use our primary power to block our secondary power with this blocker. We're using the branch out we can do that with just one power and now that our primary battery is blocking our secondary battery, there's no longer power on the secondary battery's input, so the XOR switch will allow the primary battery's output through. So we'll connect this back to our circuit. You'll see there's no drainage on our backup battery, and the capacity is going up, albeit very slowly. And our primary battery just has that two active usage from our new furnace system. And then if we look at the end of the circuit, we can see we have six power allocation left over. So if we have another couple little things, we can still add it to this first battery. But also, once we have the second one charged, if we decide we need more power, say we want a circuit that uses 11 power or something like that, we can just start a second circuit off of this battery and go back to having just the one circuit for this one rather than a backup. But that's all for today's episode. Hopefully this helped you out a little bit. If it did, please hit the thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Leave any questions or comments down below for me, and I will see you all next time.